Okay, good morning. Hopefully this goes uh, a little quicker than slower here, but um, today we're looking at uh, derivatives of exponentials and logs. Uh, before we get there, we're going to review a little, little bit of stuff with exponentials and logarithms. We're going to learn derivatives of it, uh, exponentials today, and uh, tomorrow will be uh, derivatives of logs. So what I would say here in your note sheet is, is just, well, not that, just recall that when you ran into something like 5 to what power equal 25, well, that was, that was pretty easy. We could just say 5 to the x. Well, that actually was 5 squared, so I knew x equal 2. You know, because 5 squared was 25. But what happened when we ran into something like, what did 5 to the x equal, say, 30? Well, I can't rewrite base 30 as 5, or I can't rewrite the number 30 as 5 to a power. But I do know it's somewhere between, it's between, 2 and 3 because 5 squared is 25 and 5 to the third is 125. So I know it's it's going to be 2 point something to get there. Well, that's when we needed to learn how to use our logarithms. Well, that's when we learned our switching forms back and forth here, okay? A to the y equals x, well, that's really saying, okay, excuse me, um, log base a of x equals y, because remember, logs equal the exponents, okay, so my exponent, it's really a log base a of x equals my exponent, and I just kind of flip back and forth between that, okay, well, again, what is a log base 3 and 9 equals 2? Well, that's really asking, okay, when I look at log 3 of 9, that is really asking what that log equals. It's really saying this equals an exponent with a base of 3, 3, that equals 9. That's what this whole side is, right? Well, we know that by switching forms, okay? Because it's what what exponent with a base of 3 equals 9? Okay? Well, obviously that's 2. And we just needed to learn how to flip-flop back and forth. Like if we were given an exponential function, we had to say, oh, this is a log with a base of 5 of 125, and it equaled the exponent, okay? So we just switch forms back and forth. And we need to be fluent switching those back and forth as well. Well, we had a few properties here in our in our logarithms. We had what what y equal to ln x. Well, y equal to ln x. Y equals ln x. Well, that's a base e. All ln's are base e exponentials. We could rewrite that as a log base e of x. But why would we do that? We know the natural log is always a base e, okay? And I know everybody's all, well, why can't I write a log base e of x? Well, there, there's reasons why we don't want to do that. We want to write ln because that's a base e exponential function. Okay, the same way when you looked at y equals log x. Well, y equals log x, well, we know what that is. That's the same as log base 10 of x. It's implied if the base is not written on the log, it's a base 10. The same way if we see a natural log, we know the base is e. Remember, e is about 2.72. And when the base is anything other than e or 10, well, then we write what the base is on there. It's pretty, pretty simple, okay? In calculus, we primarily work with base e, exponentials and natural logs. Well, there's a few more properties to run through here, and hopefully you remember these. These are really important properties. Log base anything of 1 equals 0, and the y to that is because when I switch its form, the base a raised to the power of 0 equals 1. OK? 
Okay. Converse, same way over here on my natural logs, the ln of 1 equals 0. Well, why is that? Because if I switch the form, I know an ln is a base e, and I know the exponent 0, and it equals the argument we called it inside. Well, that, that's why that happens, okay? Very special property. We also had a log base a of a equals 1. Well, why is that? Well, the reason that is, is because if I change form of this, it is the base to the exponent equaling the a. Well, obviously, yeah, the base to the exponent equaling the argument. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. ln of e is 1. These are things you guys, you need to know. We can't sit back and struggle on this stuff. And if I took the ln of e equaling 1, okay, well, how would I rewrite that? Well, that is e, because the base on ln is e, raised to the exponent of 1 equals e. Okay? The base, the ln, has a base of e. It's equaling an exponent of 1, and it equals the argument of e. That's why the ln of e is 1. And then we have another one here. The log base a of a of x equals x. Well, those can get a little, little goofy. Well, the reason that is, is pretty simple. There's a few ways to think about this. Well, I can use my expanding rules, but even if I didn't, if I took this guy, because it's a logarithm, if I rewrote it as an exponential, I can see it's a base a, a, to the exponent equals the argument, and I see it's the same exact thing. That's why a log base a of a to the x equals x, because there my exponents equal each other. Okay, same way here. A log e to the, or ln e to the x equals x. Well, if I change the form, that's a base e exponential function with an exponent of x equaling the argument, okay? Oh, that's why the ln of e to the x equals x, because they're exponents, the exponents equal each other. Another way to think about that particular one, okay, is, and we're gonna get into these properties again too, the way I like to think about this little guy here is we do have our expanding in condensing rules, well, my exponent actually comes down and it's really a times a log a of a equaling x. Well, when my base and my argument are the same, what do they equal? It equals 1, and a times 1 equals x. Therefore, that wasn't an a, that was an x I brought down. Therefore, x equals x. That goes away, it's 1. Same way, ln e. ln of e is 1, and I'm left with x equals x, okay, because I can power that down and say x ln e, okay, that's really what I'm doing, x ln e equals x, why? Because that is 1 times x to equal x, okay. These little guys are a little, a little wonky, but if you think about it, this is an exponential function. Why does a raised to the log base a of x equal x? Well, those are kind of like little inverse goofy properties here. But because this is an exponential, if I rewrote that as a logarithm, okay, it's a log whose base is a with its argument of x equals, and remember the logs equal the exponent. There it is. Log a to the x. That's why they equal each other. Point A, log base A of x equals x. Because they're the same thing. Okay? This is the same thing as that. Because that A raised to the log A goes away. x equals x. Same thing here. E to the ln x. Well, I can Get rid of that. I can pop this guy off. If I rewrote that, that's a base E exponential. Well, it's a base E exponential. That's a natural log. And the argument on that is x. Okay, Because here's my base. 
Here's my argument equals, remember, logs equal exponents, and the exponents ln. That's why they're the same thing. Okay. Lots of ways to think about that, but those properties of logs are very important. And then here's the property of a log I was talking about where a log base a of x, oh, when there's an exponent in the argument, I can power that little guy down and say, oh, that's the exponent times the log. And the same thing works over here for my natural logs. I can take that exponent inside the argument and it turns into a b times the ln x. The same way, if we had a log of a product, that turned into the sum of logs where we added the independent logs uh, together. Same thing for natural logs. Okay? The natural log of a product is the sum of the logs. And then we had our quotients yet. Okay? And in our quotients, we had the log of a quotient is the difference of the log. Remember, subtract quotients went to subtraction the same way multiplication went to adding. Division went to subtracting top log minus bottom log. Okay? And we had the change of base formula. If I didn't have a log base 10, well, like, a, for instance, a log base 2 of 3, well, I don't know what that is because this equals something. Well, that means 2 to what power equals 3? Well, I don't know. Somewhere between 1 and 2. Well, that's when we learned the change of base. When I was a student, I had to go into, I had to go into a chart of logs. So we learned to change the base of this log. The way I used to think about it is the log of the guts divided by the log of the base. Okay, and we type that right into our calculator, and it gives us what it is. But on your CAS calculators, remember, you have the LOG log, and when you type that in, this is always kind of uh, not more gray than black. In this box, you have to put something in. If you choose not to put something in there, calculator is going to automatically think you're talking about a base 10 log. So if you're not talking about a base 10 and you're talking about base 2, you better put the 2 in there, and that's going to spit out your answer for you, right? And I'm not going to waste my time going through the calculator action on that because you don't want a long video, so I won't. So some uh, expanding and condensing. Remember, expanding logs. That was taking one log, turning it into many logs. First thing we see is we had a division. So that's like the log of the top minus the log, or ln, of the bottom. And then we're like, oh, a step further. We're like, oh, we got a product in there because that's 3 times e to the x. So we took this one and we said, oh, that's the ln of 3 plus the ln of e squared minus the ln of x. Oh, remember there was a power in there. Roots were always powers because they are powers. And then we use that last property. We powered them all down and we said ln 3 plus 2 times the ln of e minus 1 half ln x. And we expanded the log. Okay. And most people got really frustrated having to show their work because they're like, oh, it's really easy. I can do that all in one step. And when you got good at it, you did. Okay. <clears throat> Rewrite as a single logarithm means condense into one log. So what you do is you work inside out. You go to the innermost parentheses and you work out. So we have 3 times an ln x minus, we'll see here because I have addition, that's going to be the ln of x plus 2 times x minus 1 because addition turned to multiplication. Well, what is x plus 2 times x minus 2? Well, that's pretty simple. That's x squared minus 4. Okay, and now I have another set of parentheses, so this is 3 times, well now I'm subtracting, that was the log of the first one divided by the second one, and I'll crumb, let's get this right, so we have 3 ln, now in my log, now I have an x over 
x squared minus 4. And then we powered that little guy up, and we said, oh, that actually equals the ln of x over x squared minus 4 raised to the third power. And we condensed it into one law. Okay? The other thing, <coughs> not just expanding and condensing, you, you need to remember how to solve your laws. Okay? These are just some algebra 2 problems. If I had to solve for x, well, then we knew we had to isolate our exponential function. So we divide both sides by 2, and we get 7x equals 60. And then we're saying, well, I know 7 squared is 49, and I know 7 to the third power is, I don't know what the heck it is, but I know it's between there. So what we needed to do, because we didn't know how to get that, we needed to extract that exponent using a logarithm. So we said the base is 7, so it's a log base 7, of 60, whose exponent is x. Okay, x equals, what, what exponent equals a base, what, 7 to what power equals 60 is exactly how I'm trying to say this. So then we got here, and then we're like, oh, crumb, I don't know how to do that. Well, I'm going to bite on the calculator here quick. I'm going to fire it up. Okay, so then we just came here, and we were going to grab our calculator here quick, and I'm going to show you another way to do this too. But then all we had to do was we had to find our log button. Oh, I need a calculator page first. Escape. Um, Come on, let's add a page, give me a calculator page. Then I grab my LOG and notice down there, we were looking for the log of what? Base seven of 60. We wanted to know what that thing equaled. Oh, 2.104, okay, so that was 2.104. So we came here and we just said, oh, 2.104. Remember, we're rounding everything to four decimal places. Well. There's another way to do this, okay? Because we know logs extract exponents, okay? So if I was at 7x equals 60, okay? We use a lot of natural logs and uh, base e's. So if I had 7x equals, I'm going to leave myself here. Remember, what I do to one side, if I took the natural log of the left side, I can take the natural log of the right side. What I do to one side, I do to the other. And then from here, what I can see is I can expand this down, and I can say, oh, that's x ln 7 equals an ln 60, which if I divide by an ln 7 on both sides, x actually equals the ln of 60 divided by the ln of 7, and that's gone, which now I'm just dividing logs, but, but watch. What happens when I come back here to my calculator? And I take the natural log of 60, whoa, come on, 60, and I, this is why I don't like you using this, and I divide that by the natural log of 9, that, or natural log of 7, right? Natural log of 7. What do I get? Oh, come on. I don't want to do this, but what do I get? Boom, the exact same answer. So I can always, remember, what you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other side of the equation. It really doesn't matter how you solve it. I know here at West, many times, not many times, all the times, we'd say, hey, change the form, plug it in. But I don't have to. I can always, that's what the beauty thing of an LN is. I natural log both sides. I can power that exponent down. And then I can divide by it and, and find out what's going on, okay? Well, over here on number two, I need to get my e to the x alone. Well, that's 80 over 200, which actually is what? 4, no, it's going to be e to the x equals, if I reduce that, it's going to be 2 over 5. Well, what is that? Well, I needed to change the form of that. Because it's a base e exponential, it's going to be the natural log of 2 fifths. Hey, that's what my exponent equals. Okay, And then I can just grab back to my calculator 
And I'm going to say the natural log of my fancy fraction of 2 over 5, what do you equal? Oh, negative 0.916. Negative 0.916. Negative 0.916. That's approximately what it equals. Okay, remember. And that's all we're doing. You're just typing it in. Most of your logs you need calculators for. Well, here I have a log. And in order to solve that, well, the first thing we're going to do is we wanted to minimize that. So we have a 3 ln x equals 6. And all that, I'm going to divide by a 3. So the ln of x equals 2. Hmm, what does this equal? Well, this is a log. Well, it's a base e log, okay? whose exponent is 2 equals x. Oh, well, look at there. I don't even need to type that into my calculator and simplify it. It's beautiful right there. And all we're going to do is we're going to divide by 1,000. Okay? And we get e to the 0.09x. That equals 3. Now i got to rewrite it because now it's a base e exponential function. Well, how do I do that? Well, base E's, we know, are natural logs. It, natural logs equal the, or all logs, equal the exponents, and the argument comes here. So what is the ln of 3? Oh, x isn't all by itself. So x actually equals the ln of 3 divided by 0 0.09. So x would be approximately equal to what? ln 3 divided by 0 0.09. So I would have to come here and say ln 3, come outside the parentheses, and divide that by, what was it? I already forgot. Lost it. 0 0.09. What does it equal? 12.207. How about 12.207? 12.207. Okay, so we need to be able to solve both exponentials and log. Primarily, we are working with base e exponentials and natural logs in calculus. Well, think of their graphs. What do the graphs look like? Well, when I'm thinking of e to the x, because my exponent's positive, remember, that's going to be a growth function. And there's a couple points of this that I know. Well, if I put 0 into the function, I get 1 out. Well, check it out. When I put, here's my x, here's my y, if I put in a 0, e to the 0, what is that? Oh, yeah, it's 1, okay? And the next thing I'm going to put in there is I'm going to put in 1, and it's going to spit out an e. So if I put in 1, it's going to spit out my e. So this point is going to be 1, comma e, okay? Well, what does my decay function look like? Well, because my exponent's negative, I know that one's decay, so that's going to kind of come down the other way. And remember, these guys never hit that horizontal asymptote. We had a horizontal asymptote at zero. Well, what points do I know? Well, that one's going through zero comma one at the same time, because when I do my x, my y, if I put zero into here, I get e to the negative 0, oh, that, yeah, that's 1. Now, over here, I will, I will, I'm going to put negative 1 in there. Why would I want to put negative 1 in there? Because that's e to the opposite of negative 1, oh, that equals e. So when I come over negative 1 and I go up e, I get negative 1, comma, e. I'm hoping you guys are able to graph these. Now, remember, e is approximately 2.72-ish, I think, if I remember right. I don't know, 2.82, it's 2 point something, it's close to 3, it's pretty much all we need, about 2.72, and that's close enough for government work, as I can say. Now, if you forget, most likely, I don't remember what a logarithm looks like, well, remember, y equals e to the x, and y equals ln x, these are inverse functions of each other, okay? So if they're inverse functions of each other, on this point, 
if I have the point 0 comma 1 and I have the point 1 comma e, if you because I, 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 I'm confident you can figure that out, well now these points are going to reflect on here, this guy is going to have 1 comma 0 and e comma 1. Well, and not to mention this horizontal asymptote, when it's reflected across y equals x, horizontal asymptotes become vertical asymptotes. Okay? And then if I went over 1, up none, I got 0. And then if I went over e, that's like 1, 2, 3, go up 1, somewhere here. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what my logs looked like. Okay? They were slow growers. Okay? That's just a little basic logarithm review. Now what we're going to do is we are going to come into and we are going to prove what the derivative of e to the x is. Okay, it's, it's going to be the hardest one for you to remember, e to the x. And it's a toughie. And we're going to do this by using the definition of the derivative. We're going to say what's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over my h member, okay? So as we come through here, the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h, well, that's e to the x plus h minus e to the x over h. Now, remember, whenever you did your derivative, if I plugged an h in here, okay, if I try to evaluate my limit, I'm going to get e to the x minus e to the x over 0 when I put a 0 in for h. Well, that gives me 0 over 0. That tells me work a little bit harder. Okay? Well, the way we're going to get to this is we are going to look at this as the limit still. h approaches 0. But we're going to say, hey, check this out. I'm adding in the exponent. What do I get when I take x squared times x to the third, I get x to the 2 plus 3. That's where, that's where my 5 comes from, adding my exponents. So I can look at this as e to the x times e to the h minus e to the x over h. And why would I want to do that? Well, I'd want to do that so that as I take the limit as h goes to 0, I can factor out an e to the x. And that leaves me an e to the h minus 1 all over h, okay? And we're going to use properties of limits to get here. Well, that is the same as taking the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the x times e to the h minus half. Ah, e to the h e raised to the h minus 1 over h, okay, which is going to allow us to go the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the x times the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h. And here, this is the one that when I plug my 0 in, I'm still getting... Okay. This is my problem child. This is my 0 over 0. This is e to the 0 is 1 minus 1 over 0. So that's my 0 over 0. So I know there's a hole in my function. There's a hole in the function here. And over here I know the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the x. I know that's e to the x. But what the heck is this? How can I algebraically do that anymore? Well, I can't really. I don't know how to do it. So what we're going to do is we are going to come quick, and we are going to add a graph page, and we are going to graph this fancy little fraction of e to the uh, of e to the x minus one over x. Right? I think that's what I want because I can't graph in terms, so it's like my e to the h minus 1 over h. And when I graph that, I'm going to hit enter. Now, my limit is approaching 0, okay? So I am looking for somewhere in here, what is that value as I get really close to 0? So now we're going to trace that. Analyze. We're going to trace. 
trace the graph. I can see at zero it's undefined. Well, of course it is. There's a hole in the function, but let's find out where it is at 0 0.0001. What's it getting really close to? 1.005. Let's get a little closer. 0 0.0000001. What's it get? Oh, look at there. It's getting really close to zero. So graphically, we can quickly find out here that this limit right over here, this limit, as I get close to zero, there's a hole in the function, but it's approaching one. So, oh, look at that. My derivative of e to the x, all the way up here, the derivative of e to the x, this whole thing, equals e to the x. Well, isn't that fancy? So when I'm looking any time, the derivative of e to the x, it equals itself. That's why that one's going to be so hard to remember. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. It's the exact same thing. So, but then what we have is we have that chain rule. That's when x is just x, right? So we got to throw the chain rule in here. So the derivative of e to the u is e to the u times the derivative of my exponent. That's my du dx, okay? So it's times the exponent. Well, when I'm looking at this example here, let's apply this now. This is a constant times e to the x. Well, my derivative of y is going to be 6 times, what's the derivative of e to the x? It's e to the x times 1. So y prime equals 6 e to the x. It's the exact same thing there in this case because that is only x. When it's more, there is more to the derivative. What do you mean? Here's what I mean. Okay, I got two more here. Well, if I'm taking the derivative of this, the derivative of e to the something is e to the something times the derivative of the something right here, which is going to be 6x. Well, that means y prime equals 6x times e to the 3x squared. See, the original e function, the original e function, that's in the derivative yet, plus the chain rule. Okay? So, like, y equals e to the cosine x, e to the, e to the something. The derivative is e to the something times the derivative of my something, derivative of cosine is negative sine x. So this derivative, y prime, should be negative sine x times e to the cosine x. Okay? Now, you definitely do not want to look at this and say y prime equals e to the cosine x minus sine x or times negative sine x. Because if I look at this, this looks like e to the cosine x minus sine x, not times sine x, not times sine x. So bottom line, when I read one of your answers like this, this derivative, I'm marking this whole thing wrong. Well, that's not what I meant. Well, that's what it looks like. You need to write it like you meant it. Okay. So what are you saying, Kruger? Well, here's what I'm saying. I'm saying, back here again, let's try this one again. I'm saying whenever we're taking the derivative of a base e exponential, y equals, it's going to be the same function. Let's leave a little spot in front and put the times by in front of it so I don't have to worry about any misdirection. Like here, I know y prime is going to equal my original e to the cosine x times negative sine x. Leave yourself some room and write it in there, okay? 
So, moving right along. Ooh, product. No, that's not a product, guys. That's just a number. That is simply straight up a number. And this one can get tricky, okay? No, what do you mean this can get tricky? Well, here's what most of you guys are going to do, and you're going to get really confused. You're going to say y prime equals, well, this is a number, so it's e squared times, what's the derivative of that? Well, it's e to the x squared times the derivative of that 2x yet, right? And then you're going to go in the back of the book, and you're going to see that that's not how they're writing it. They're probably going to write it as 2x e to the x squared plus 2. Where are they getting that? Well, if I take this and I break it apart, it's e squared times 2x times e to the x squared. When I'm multiplying common bases, I add their exponents. Okay? Well, that's dumb. Might be. But see, I can, I can get it all the way back here, too, because I could totally redefine this original function and say, whoa, e squared times e. Oh, that's really the function as e to the x squared plus 2. Well, now that's what y equals. Now let's take the derivative. Well, it's going to be e to the x squared plus 2 times the derivative of my exponent, which is 2x. And I get to it, all right? Now, when I keep trucking along, my next one, the next one is a product. This is product. Okay? And we want horizontal tangents. Ooh, horizontal tangents of y, well, that's when y equals 0. Okay? That's when my y prime, excuse me, equals zero. That's horizontal tangents. Well, here's my u, here's my v. I need to product rule this thing. So y prime equals derivative. So really I'm looking for u prime times v. So I have 2x times e to the x plus the derivative of e to the x is e to the x chain rule times 1 times x squared. So really, I'm looking at y prime equals 2xe to the x plus x squared e to the x. How the heck am I supposed to try to find my zeros of that, you ask? Well, it is a little thing called factoring. Zero equals, what's the greatest common factor that they have here? Well, they each have at least an x in common. They each have at least, they have an e to the x in common too, don't they? Where's my, uh, so if I take an e to the x out yet, what, what do I have left in there? Well, if I take these two out of here, I have a 2 left here, right? Plus, take it out of here, I got an x left here. So, what is it? It's 0 equals x times e to the x times 2 plus x. So I have three factors. When does my derivative equal 0? Zero product property. Any time x equals 0, any time e to the x equals 0, and any time 2 plus x equals 0. Well, x equals negative 2, there's a nice horizontal tangent. There's a nice horizontal tangent. When does e to the x equals 0? Well, think about when we graphed e to the x. What did it have? It had a horizontal asymptote at 0. Never equals 0. I can't find one there. So, my horizontal tangent is at 0, and it's at negative 2. Well, how do I know I'm right? Well, what you can do, whoop, I didn't want to do that. You can come back here, and let's just graph it. Let's hit tab. Let's go up. Let's delete, delete. Let's graph our function. What was our function? i got to find it. 
we had x squared times e, I didn't want that, times e to the x. Well, let's graph that. Well, look at that crafty little guy. Okay, well, I can see I have a zero at a maximum or minimum. Let's, uh, let's take that to maybe negative five. Let's take this side. Come on. Let's take that to maybe delete, delete. Let's go to maybe a five. Stretch that. Well, yeah, I can see that. Let's make this one. So it sure looks like I have menu. I'm going to analyze my graph. I'm going to look for a maximum somewhere from here to here. Whoa, maximums have to be flat spots. So I got one at negative two. And I can say menu, analyze graph, minimum. Hey, minimums have flat spots at zero, zero. Check it out. Look at where my flats are. On, whoa, didn't want to do that. I got one at negative two. Whoa, I don't know what I just did. So I'm going to put it back. So I got one at negative two. I got one at zero. Those are my horizontal tangents. Nice. Okay. And where are we moving now? Sorry for the longness of this. Um, but I'm going to keep pressing forward here quick. Other bases. No, I'm going to save this one for tomorrow. And we'll finish the rest of this thing out tomorrow and we'll do natural log. So we're just going to stop her there and we will start with the other bases tomorrow. If you wish to begin your homework, the only ones you're going to be able to find the derivatives of are base E exponential functions. Talk to you tomorrow.